Hey. Yeah. How's it going? What? Pro probably uh, probably what? noticed it's way past two thirty. It's because um, it's procrastination Friday, where you don't do the things you know you're supposed to do because you don't feel like it. Now, in all seriousness, um, there were things that we needed to do that are classified that we can't share with you, and if that bothers you, that's too bad. But the first topic we have to talk about here on the stream this Friday at 2.44 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is the fact that the deep learning super sampling function that NVIDIA was so crazed about has some pretty ridiculous resolution limitations. Yeah, and so for those of you guys that don't remember, the DLSS was something that they started talking about. Uh, Jensen Huang, right? That's his last name? Yes, yes. Started talking about at the RTX launch um, where essentially it's enabling... Higher res or there, it's essentially trying to use um, assets from like NVIDIA servers, right? And so essentially what deep learning is, is it's using the Turing architecture to its advantage to be able to do a lot of the GPU compute that normally would take up a lot of the core clocks compensation onto what the Turing does, which is ray tracing in real time, like shadow effects and things like that. So it's supposed to use the, the deep learning portion capabilities of Turing to its advantage and allow the card to essentially handle certain graphic computations with ease. The problem with that is you can't enable deep learning super sampling whenever you feel like it and just get the benefit of it. Yep. According to NVIDIA, which they were quoted after Tech Power reached out to them to ask, like, why are you limiting DLSS on certain resolutions and for certain cards? It's, yeah. um, it works better when the card is under complete load at 100%. And I guess Tech Power, what they ended up doing was forcing GPU load by 100% by doing very specific things that causes that to happen. Okay. And DLSS still couldn't be enabled. Huh. So they're like, eh, unless we're doing something wrong, we're not buying it. Which I don't know what motivation NVIDIA would have unless they're trying to segue into something else that we're unaware of. You know what I mean? I, this, the, the, I think they're doing more behind the scenes with RTX and, and that product line. Mm. than they've shown like i because a lot of the stuff we've seen out of rtx and i don't know if you feel the same feels kind of uh it's neat but at the same time almost half-baked it does feel half-baked like, it, it, it is the start of something new but i mean it doesn't feel like the typical starts of something new that no. we've seen in the past right yeah it feels like they're kind of mm. i don't know if you want to call it a, a stumbling block the first time or if it's just you know you, you have your inaugural turing architecture your inaugural ray tracing mm. if that's why but yeah, it's, it just doesn't, the DLSS, the whole RTX ray tracing, that just doesn't feel, feels like a proof of concept more than anything else right now. It does absolutely feel like a proof of concept. I'll agree with you there. But the one thing that's kind of interesting as well is if, if you go back and you reference that page from Tech Power Up, they did a DLSS analysis with both Metro Exodus and Battlefield 5. Okay. And the results were not consistent across the board. Like, so for example, if using an RTX 2060 at 1080p, and it does not allow you to enable DLSS with ray tracing on, uh, it did not have the same result in Battlefield 5. You might actually be able to enable an RTX 2060 with DLSS at 1080p and graphics maxed up. Like it's hmm. not consistent at all, but it was something that they were able to catch because they were already doing these benchmarks for DLSS since the release of Metro Exodus across cards to see how it scaled, and that's yep. when they noticed, like, this is really weird. It's, this is strange. Most of the time, you have to have ray tracing enabled for you to even use DLSS, as far as I've seen. Yeah. Kind of kind of strange, right? Um, I certainly hope it's maybe it's a bug of some sort and they're able to fix it in the future. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, it almost seems like something that will improve, but right now is just kind of in the infancy. <laughs> infancy of DLSS. I see. See, no? What? Huh? Huh? What? I, I just, I'm, I, my attention on is not held with this kind of tech because it's still very early on in stages to which we'll actually see it prevalent. It's kind of like when the new DirectX 10 standard came out back in the day, everyone was like, oh man, this is going to increase GPU utilization and performance like significantly. And there were maybe only like a couple of games that came out yeah. under DirectX 10 back in the day. And it wasn't really a big deal until it became the standard. And then it was like, okay, now we see the benefit. Right. So we'll see. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Um, in other fun news, did you hear about what Vox Media did? Who didn't? It was, which I might point out, that the fact that we posted on Facebook that our blindfolded thermal paste application was better than the Verge's non-blindfolded 
actual try-hard thermal paste application was a complete coincidence. We had no way of knowing that The Verge was going to start slamming people the way they did. And by slamming, yeah, Sean so, will segue. So what happened? So Vox Media is the company that owns The Verge. So this wasn't technically the people at The Verge. It was their parent mm. company. Um, essentially, there were quite a few people, ourselves included, um, that started essentially taking the piss out of that video. Because that taking the piss was hilarious. And um, so, you know, you had a lot of bloggers, a lot of tech bloggers just kind of make mm -hmm. videos of, holy crap, look at, the, look at what they did. And Vox Media has started manually putting copyright strikes against those videos, which are do fall under uh, fair use. Oh, That's that is petty. That is petty. Right. So after, oh, they're just, they're just digging that hole. They just keep going, man. They should throw themselves in it. I'm going to take a break real quick to welcome everybody who's jumping in on Twitch and on Facebook. Uh, how you doing, Juke W, Eminem Smuggler, Ghost1818, Alien Icon, Weasley, welcome. Happy to see you all joining us once again for a lovely Friday of shenanigans. <laughs> well, you can see the the nice lit up brimstone PC that we have sitting right here, right? Obviously, it's, it sticks out like a sore thumb with its RGB-ness, um, but it kind of also collides and meshes well with our RGB desk, might I say. But anywho, uh, we're actually going to be selling this brimstone PC at a ridiculously low price, in the upcoming weeks, maybe within a month, don't know yet, we'll see. But you'll literally be able to buy this PC practically for the same price that you'd pay for the parts. So we're, we're, we're practically giving it away at that point. So stay tuned if you have an interest in the system. Uh, and for those of you guys that can't really see it on the, uh, on the stream super well, the Brimstone is it's a full custom loop, all hard line, all hand bent, um, actually by Zach. Yes. So it, the, uh, it's a little hard to see, but we will be posting some showroom photos of this so you guys can actually check out. Oh, the, yeah. Uh, the bends and lights and all the... the oh, yeah. Oh, there we go. Ugh. Getting all in close. Get it! Get it! Um, Juke W said, uh, and still no RTX and Shadow Tomb Raider. That will probably be a while, I would imagine, especially after the backlash that they're kind of running into. And Weasley said he was excited for DLSS news on Battlefield 5. I haven't even touched Battlefield 5 yet. Man. Hell, I have not even finished Resident Evil 2. Wait, really? Yeah, dude. You were like real into that. Dude, I was. Like, I was getting ready to sit down and play the hell out of it. And yeah. then, like, the, the stuff with my sciatic kicked in. And, like, I can't sit down for long periods of time. And it's, like, sucks. It's like something out there was like, oh, hey, bro, you want to play some video games? Nah. Ain't happening. Okay. It is kind of funny that an injury is preventing you from playing video games. It's well, usually the opposite. And right? It's usually like, oh, I broke my leg. No, I just had to play a bunch of Crash Bandicoot. No. no. With no. my luck, I'd like break my arm or like my hand. And then I'd have to like, I, don't, I guess I could get one of those like those Microsoft accessibility controllers. Because I've heard those things are amazing for people that have limited use of limbs and such. It's done wonders for a lot of disabled kids. So... Why not? You can kind of ones you can, like control with your your chin, dude. It's it it almost looks like a set of of um, like turntables is the way it looks like. It's like a big rectangular controller. It's got two big like black circles on them that you could use that are like touch sensitive and stuff. Okay, really cool. Uh, a friend of mine, Craig at Able Gamers, worked with Microsoft to develop that controller because Able Gamers is a foundation that's been working with like um, mentally disabled or crippled. Uh, physically disabled people that want to play video games but can't because of their disabilities and they've been working with like third-party companies to make controllers specific to the person um, and working with Microsoft to do that to see that Microsoft had like an interest to bring such a product to the masses yeah it was like a no-brainer oh, absolutely downside is we'd love to sell that controller on our website but it's controlled specifically through Microsoft so yeah gotcha um, if the opportunity ever presents itself for us to offer those controllers, and oh, absolutely, add it in a heartbeat, man. Yeah, no, we have, um, and we have a, a I don't want to say a lot, but we have a specific subset of clients that are, you know, disabled. We deal with a lot of, uh, a lot of the blind, actually, doing screen reading software and that kind of stuff, getting all that set up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Quite a few of our workstations. That's their primary use. Yeah. There was. What was the software that? Um, Oh, it was the... It that was, Kyle w had to have installed on the system well, for that there guy. Was the, I it was the, called Jaws. Yeah, that Jaws. was... Jaws. Well, because it was also right when uh, right when the Skylake, Kaby Lake kind of switchover happened because that was when you had to get rid of Windows 7 on new hardware. Mm -hmm. And the I think the accessibility reader in Windows 7 compared to Windows 10 was, wasn't even close. Like, Windows 7 had way more features. Right. Um, so that's... We had a lot of people that were looking for 
Skylink era stuff. I know Windows 10 made it like ridiculously easy to enable those accessibility features too because I enabled them oh, all by they accident. Start talking to frequently. you frequently. Microsoft Windows <laughs> I made Gerard on the the Bird Box build do his impersonation of Microsoft Sam because it's disgusting. Yeah, it's 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 a little creepy. It doesn't sound human. No, like, no, it's first question I asked. I was like, "How long did it take you to perfect that? How much time did you spend in private, just sitting to yourself, like Microsoft Sam?" Like, like I I can't even begin to replicate it. So like he's he by the time he's fifty, he's gonna have like a raspy voice of like a seventy year old man. Oh Lord, how are you? Hey, how's it going? Oh, I heard cat cigarettes are on sale at the corner store. I oh, better no. get my butt Everybody up off the couch you and go get for there. Winston one hundreds or bust. Oh, that's right. Winston's are made with all natural preservatives. <laughs> <laughs> now I just sound like Ned from South Park. Mm, I'll never use a gun again. Oh no. <laughs> um. So talk a little bit more about uh, what Boxed Media did. Box? Box oh, Media. Box. Box, yeah, I sorry. mean, essentially, so, <coughs> look, the, the video they put out was effectively the room for building PCs. It was just hilariously awful. Um, and, yeah, so they're essentially, I think at this point, just just reacting. I don't really know if they're trying don't to mind make me. a play. What are you? I was looking for my water bottle. I don't know where it went. Oh, gotcha. It's gone. Um, but there is there's some kind of uh, kind of happy news, kind of bittersweet news I wanted to talk about, and that's the opportunity. Do you hear anything about this? No. So like two thousand rip opportunity. Yeah. Rip. So in two thousand four, uh, NASA set sent. A, oh, that opportunity. Yeah. They, oh, they dude, sent the, a rover to Mars. The message it sent back was friggin' heartbreaking, man. Well, see, my so battery's running low. It is getting dark. It's bittersweet though. So it originally landed in two thousand four, and they expected it to last for three months. So it did just die. But it's 2019, so it, it lasted 15 years. How is it? Three months. How is it operating? On solar power? Yeah, solar power. And wow. essentially, what happened with this one um, is it, it ran into a dust storm, and oh can't yeah, get solar power anymore is yep. effectively what happened. Um, but, but does that mean it could be re uh, revived if the sun hits it again? Not really, because the the dust storm that hit was planet wide, so it's at, it's like buried essentially. Oh man, really? Right. So I mean, the um, they're going to be sending another one. Uh -huh. up. Weasley said he cried. Yeah. Sorry. I, it, it's, it's heartbreaking, dude. It's, it it, it's almost like um, uh, the short circuit. It's like losing Johnny Five. I'm alive. Johnny Five is alive. Five Need, still... Needs input. Well, Need more have, input. Um, curiosity, cur curiosity still up there. So we do Did still it have... kill the cat? <clears throat> Juke W, rest in peace, Wally. Man, that was a heartbreaking uh, movie too. I mean, it was it's all heart heartbreaking. It was heartbreaking just because of the film, and also because like, I kind of want one of those fat people floating chairs, man. But then, by default, you're going to become a fat person. Yeah, but they're dope. Those chairs are awesome. Oh, I'm sure we'll enjoy them at some point in our lifetime. It's like the super advanced version of the rascals you see at Walmart. Do you think when they have those like giant accessibility floating ones, will they still have that same annoying beep, beep, beep when they're backing up? Alien Icon said, uh, Curiosity may have killed the cat, but Satisfaction brought it back. <sighs> you two deserve each other. Yes. Um, Mash made in cat hell. Crazy or cat. Columbus. Crazy cat. Crazy cat lady den. Crazy cat lady den. Crazy cat lady den. Say that five times super fast. No. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, Ruru, fourteen about that. years, two hundred and I think two hundred and ten thousand pictures sent back. That thing has has its place in history. Oh, absolutely, and, yeah, dude. There's though there will probably not be anything like it unless um, weren't they planning by twenty twenty four to like colonize Mars with people and it was like a one way trip. Like uh, you're gonna well, go to Mars been, and live and die. They've there. been talking about that, but I think they've been talking about that for a very long time. the The other thing is the opportunity was originally supposed to go about a kilometer, and it managed to travel over thirty miles. That's crazy. Yeah. So the the expectations that they had for this, it blew it out of the water. Yeah. Um, so they're they're going to be using. Oh, and the other thing was opportunity was the uh, was the rover that it has pretty much allowed us to see a couple more pieces of evidence that indicate that water is probably on Mars somewhere. Yeah, or that the fact that there was the Mars could actually be the result of a dead planet. Right. Which is crazy. Yeah. It's like you ever see like the conspiracy theorists? Like what if the human race originally lived on Mars and the meteor wasn't actually a meteor that killed the dinosaurs, but a pod that brought humanity to a different planet to live. Yeah, man. It is that so crazy, bro. Awesome, so like technically we're aliens. <laughs> 
Did you know that, like, the pyramids were built by space people, man? Bro, and they had a spaceship that ran on water, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> water. Whoa. Yeah, it was called Doom. He was a space marine. <laughs> yeah. Which he brought his space peanut. I want to go to space. Wow, that was like three movie references and a game reference all wrapped into one. I understood none of them. Uh, yeah, if anybody understands any of the references, I'll give you an AVA t-shirt. But you got to have the correct answer with every single one that you provide. <laughs> we are the aliens. I mean, yeah. Whole story of Mars. This is true, Wesley. Weasley. Uh, Duke W. You guys are on to something. All right, so uh, this is something I wanted to talk about. Not necessarily for the thing itself, but actually I just wanted to kind of have this discussion. The thing, the thing, there's something on the wing. The, oh. Some thing. All Sorry. right, Shatner. Go ahead. Um, Noctua is launching a new thermal paste. So Noctua is a uh, fan and CPU cooler company. Did you really need to explain that? Maybe. <laughs> Look, man, I'm not trying to leave anybody behind. No child left behind. No Tim left behind. Um. So they're replacing NTH1 with NTH2, or they're coming out with NTH2. Is it because it's a higher number? Does that imply that it's better? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly what it implies. Mm. Um, but it, what I wanted to Saucy. talk about with this, because we, we've talked about this a little bit off camera, but I feel like thermal paste used to be something a lot of people used to care more about. And I, I don't know if that's the right way to phrase it. It feels like in the past, it was more of a decision that people had to make, whereas now it's just like, yeah, whatever. Um, do you agree? Like, what's your, I'm curious to see what your thoughts are. Trend, trend, trend at this point in time is that I do remember, yes, working with a lot of clients that I would spend a good 10 minutes of a conversation talking about thermal paste differences. And now it's just whatever you recommend. And I think it's because we're finally at a point in time now where we have CPUs that are going to be cooled similarly across the board, uh, between it's between air heat sinks and liquid coolers that it doesn't really matter a whole lot. You know, so, we were dealing with processors that were running much hotter back in the day, and now the efficiency of silicon and die size is getting better and better to where it just, those minor differences aren't going to make or break your PC's performance long term. So you think it's it's on the, the actual the CPU side, not that thermal paste has been getting better or that people have been right. more educated on it, it's that the CPUs have been improving? Correct. Thanks again. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see this because I I, uh, I know your favorite thermal paste I absolutely hate. Oh, Innovation Cooling. Yes. I do not like that paste. Diamond Carrot. It cools wonderfully, but it just... It's you can't like... spread it, dude. That, that is not no. a thermal paste you God, spread. No, you can't Like, I remember uh, Cooler saying, telling me, like, last year that in order for him to spread Innovation Cooling to his liking, he had to heat it up. Oh, yeah. He would heat up the tube to make it more, like... Less viscosity, like the viscosity was better, so he'd be able to just kind of spread it on the the, the CPU call today. I remember my brother texted me once, and he was like, "Why the hell do you use this thermal paste? It's an utter nightmare. It spreads like shit." I'm like, "Well, um, you're not supposed to spread it. You're not meant to do that with innovation cooling. You put a pea size in the center, maybe a few in the corner if the die's huge." Oh, I and tried it, using it on a GPU at one point, and that was that's all I ever use on a GPU. Oh God! Are you kidding, dude? Forty-five minutes of frustration, dude. I I never spread thermal paste. I don't I don't sit there with a little plastic spudger and spread it. I just throw a dot on there, let pressure do its job, and call it a day. See, I do that with CPUs, but GPUs I like to do. I like to spread. Don't tell in, Don't tell Intel CPUs are running cooler. Yeah, I know Rudu. I know what you mean. And Juke W says most air coolers and all ones are coming with thermal paste pre-applied nowadays, and that is true. It is Which is kind of pain in the ass for system integrators. I mean, it's pain in the ass for everybody. It's garbage. I mean, it's great for the people that are not all too comfortable with building PCs to the point to where they have ever had to apply thermal paste, but they can install like items like heat sinks and liquid coolers by following instructions. And then you're like, oh, thermal paste. I mean, it works. But it, it's just a quick way to piss off system integrators. And I'm not going to name names of who does it. Won't name names. For respect. Oh, oh yeah. I will. Every time I have to put a damn Corsair cooler in, it's just like, oh, Sorry, you guys. got a bunch of gray stuff on your hands. You pull it's off that it's like thing. you had a night with Roger they from have, American Dad. They have that perfect piece of plastic that keeps it pristine. And oh, like, I got yes. this. And I got the gray stuff all on my hands. And then it's all, yeah, pain in the butt. Yeah. <laughs> Better bet Sean likes to spread. <clears throat> wow, ghost. Right for the jugular. 
Rudo says Arctic Silver and MX4 has been industry standard for 10 years. That's or MX4. Really, that's been a really prevalent one. I don't know if I'd say standard. Arctic Silver has been around since Arctic I've Silver's been working for AVA Direct, so 2008. MX4, I think, maybe showed up a year later. Mm -hmm. And there was MX3 before that. And there's there was, MX2. And then there's MX2. But there's no MX. Really? There's no Arctic Silver MX. Huh. I think the number has to do with the, the weight, the gram. Something like that. Most I, likely. I, it has to. It's the only, I, I haven't really checked to confirm that that's true, but off the top of my head, I would have to assume. Yeah, no, the ones we that's see why they're often are numbers. probably, what, Icy Diamond, Arctic Silver, or AS5, NTH1. Those are pr probably our most prevalent. Like, we use Cooler Masters and Prolimitech and all that, but those seem to be the three that we use the most often in builds. Mm. Nobody's going to talk about Cool Laboratories Liquid Metal? Okay, we'll, we'll use, uh, was it? Or Grizzly? Thermal, yeah, Thermal Grizzly. Thermal Grizzly. Conductonaut or whatever for D-Lids, but... Conductonaut. Conductonaut. Um, which, honestly, I've always just used the Cool Laboratory Liquid Metal, and it worked just fine. I, but I, I'll, I think I've only used Grizzly, actually. Uh, I'll never forget the first time I worked with it, though, and I expected it to stick and didn't realize that the shit would roll all over the place, and yeah, that was a nightmare. <laughs> Cleaning liquid metal off of bare PCB is not fun with cotton swabs. At all. I don't wish that on my enemies. Yeah. It's no, just that's, awful. Oof. Especially if it has those little metal pieces that you have to get all the cotton stuck oh, in. Oh, man. It's, it's like, okay, so I delitted uh, Intel's 14-core processor, one of them. And, uh, oh, one of those guys like X's? Yeah. And when I first installed it in my PC, only half the memory that I was installing was showing up. And... I just assumed it was something with the board. I thought that was my immediate instinct. But someone had told me, like, uh, if you deleted it, you could have uh, bridged some stuff on the CPU and applying the liquid metal. So you might want to take it apart, clean it, put it back together. Sure enough, I opened it. It looked like I smeared it all over the place. But then I did a, a an even cleaner job than I did the, the first time, put it back together, same thing. It was just that the board didn't like the memory timings. First time I'd ever seen a motherboard like, no, you can't use half your memory because I don't like the timings. <laughs> so I had to change the timings, and then the board was like, okay, here's all your memory. <laughs> so, wow, thanks, ASRock. Appreciate it. Yeah. I had a discussion with Alex earlier, and he just he could not believe that there's a company named ASRock. And he's known that company's been around for a while, but he's like, how do you, how do you come to that name? ASRock. ASRock. I don't know. ASRock. Like, A.S. Rock. It has to what be, the hell? I don't know. There has to be a story behind it, you'd think. <laughs> and just like is Ghost there? said, Ass Rock. Like. It's exactly what it is. How I, does that happen? Yeah, like, it, where does that name come from? Maybe it's a family name? I mean, it could be. Well, who? Hey, that's Johnny Ass Rock. How's it going, man? I mean. How you doing? Ass is in my last name. Cassley. Yeah. Cass. Lee. Hmm. I see it. Yeah. I hear it. I don't believe it, but it's there. Are you you're you're literally looking up the Wikipedia page for Ass Rock? Yeah, I always just called them Ass Rock, because why Ass Rock? Apparently, it's part of a company called Pegatron now. Yeah, I remember which I know Pegatron. Nothing about, but that I know Pegatron. Kind of fun. Ass Rock is in, uh, to me. It's a similar way that you read our company name. It's not Ava Direct. It's A V A Direct because those letters don't spell anything. So you can only assume they're hyphenated. I mean, look, and you it say probably them as technically is AS Rock, but I say AS, AS Rock. Like, and, I and say then, AS Rock. Which is kind of ironic because AS, uh, those are Alex's initials. So maybe, you know, maybe it's a conspiracy. Tis conspiracy. I'm, I don't know. I'm just talking out of my butt. Um, <laughs> Ghost1818. Our products are ass, and we know some of you like that. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Sean. <laughs> wait, wait, Six what? Titties. Sean. Men's butts? Is it men's butts or women's butts? There's no clear delineation here. I'm going to vote for men's butts. I can see Sean with a sticker on the back of his car. Men's butts drive me nuts. <sighs> Happy <laughs> Valentine's Day, everybody. <laughs> Sean had a glorious day. Yeah, working. <laughs> yeah. Just wiping the sweat off my brow and putting my life into something that Practically gives me cancer. Uh, it, it looks like our uh, our guest star has fallen asleep again, Joe. Guest star? What are you talking about? Our guest star. Oh. He's worked hard his whole life. You know. 
sitting somewhere and doing absolutely nothing for a year. So he deserved it. Nah, we'll put him back through his paces. Yep. And hopefully we will find it. It's forever home. <gasps> that would be fun if we put it up like it's an adopt it, an adoption. Like, do you want to adopt the AVA Brimstone? Please call now because <laughs> there's many PCs around the world that okay. don't have a place to call home. Oh, yes. And they would just want a shot at living a, the best life that they can. And you're supposed to be singing in the arms of an angel right now. Well, please, if you have a heart, and if you don't care about your wallet, take home brimstone. <laughs> I don't know any more Sarah McLaughlin music. <laughs> she has like that kind of like that weird wisp to her voice too when she talks. She's like, "Why are you doing a Nicolas Cage impersonation?" Is, is that Nicolas Cage? Yeah, that's a hundred percent Nicolas Cage. Wow. Well, you went, you went a little Owen Wilson with it. we got to find the buried treasure because I'm going to put on a bear suit and high kick some women in the face. <laughs> Two different movies. <laughs> Casey and I watched The Wicker Man just for the scene when he dresses up in a grown man's bear suit to, like, karate kick women. Oh, no, yeah. He, well, or the bees scene. That's a classic. Not the bees! Not the bees! Ah, they're in my eyes! Did you see Mandy? With him? No. It, it, it was like the Nicolas Cage. You know how every like five to ten years he has a movie that people are like, holy crap, Nicolas Cage did a good movie? I'm a vampire. I'm a vampire. This was that one. I want to see Mandy. It's supposed to be good. Uh, Casey and I were scrolling through Netflix, and there's some movie, like futuristic movie about him being like a cop that can like see through time. And it shows a snippet of him just like driving in a convertible in the desert with a gun on the seat. And he's talking to like what looks like a transcoder from Star Trek. And you're like... The only interesting thing about this movie is just when you thought Nicolas Cage's hairline couldn't recede anymore, you were proven wrong. Um, but come on. It's like Wesley Snipes taking every role he can because he cheated Uncle Sam and went to prison for two years, and now nobody wants to work with him, so he has no choice. Yeah, but he gave us Demolition Man and Blade. This is true. What is your boggle? My boggle? You don't know how to use the three shells? Do you have anything you want to say to us? Yeah. Uh, Teddy Bear. Juke W. Con Air was good. Um... Yeah, it was enjoyable, but you know, it's like you've ever Put seen that, that meme. It's like where down. Friday. It's it's the meme if if Friday was a person and it's just Nicolas Cage from Con Air with his hair waving in the wind. <laughs> yeah, is that 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 might be one of the greatest mullets? In, is it a mullet? I think it's a mullet, isn't it? No, he doesn't have short hair in the front. Does he not? No, it definitely it feels like a not, mullet. Now, are we looking this up? We're now? looking this up. Nicolas Cage, Con Air. No, that is that is no is that mullet, not a mullet, sir. He's he just brushes it back, just brushes his hair back. Did he actually grow that hair for the movie too? He, I, he would have to have, right? Like I don't know, man. Well, no. If you look at if you look at Nicolas Cage's hairline in Con Air, I, uh, I feel like it, the, it looks natural, man. I feel like that hair needs to make a comeback. What right? long and stringy? It's yes, a, it's in truck stops all over this great country, Joe. No, I mean Nicolas Cage. Oh, he needs to make a comeback with that hair, not America. Do you think he could grow that hair still? Do you want everybody to have a stroke at the same time? Because that would happen. <laughs> Sir, don't, don't, don't put it past me. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not going to tell you no. Wow, link us a pick. No, huh? Alien Icon says Con Air was more was more than good, and I know exactly why she's saying it. Enough said. All right, here's a real conversation. Is Con Air better or worse than Face Off? Oh, worse. Come on. You think Face Off is better? Oh, oh no. I think fa uh, Face Off is far better, and Con Air is just... It's not a bad movie. It just pales a comparison, dude. It's Nicolas Cage playing John Travolta, and John Travolta playing Nicolas Cage, and they're literally forced to, like, flip-flop their characters' personalities halfway through the movie. What movie writer is ever able to come up with a script that's as dynamic as that and have the actors that succeed? You know, there's a, there's a point. That you Sorry, I had to hold back from cursing massively because of how passionate I was about this There's also subject. another reason that you neglected to mention on why Face Off is better. Nicolas Cage, hardcore dancing in a priest's outfit. Yes. Just like. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, oh yeah. And, and grabbing butts. Oh, there it is. Look at that. Look at the glory of Con Air. But yeah, no, I think Face Off was a better movie. It's like John Travolta playing Nicolas Cage's line, Eve, Eve, I hate to see you go, but I love to watch you leave. And it was really uncomfortable to see John Travolta act like that because that's, like, not in his wheelhouse ever. So to have to, like, adopt Nicolas Cage's kind of acting style in a way. A little bit. It, it, it made me uncomfortable when I was a kid, but I mean, maybe that's why I liked it a little okay. bit because I'm like, 
I like John Travolta, but he he is an uncomfortable kind of dude. I mean, he is now. I feel like he's always been uncomfortable, but like... And there was a reason why he was trapped in the closet with Tom Cruise in South Park episode. Yeah, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Go to the closet, John Travolta. No. I also found out that he did the voice for Bolt in that animation called Bolt. It was was John Travolta. Huh. I mean, hey. I haven't seen any of the new movies John Travolta's been in because, I don't know, reasons. Yeah, and the last one I even heard about was, uh, was it Gotti? Which is like a... You played John Gotti? Yeah. It did, it did not. No? Yeah. Mm. Mm. I wanted to see um, Black Mask because I heard Johnny Depp did oh, an yeah. amazing, amazing job playing Whitey Bulger. Yeah, I'm curious to see that one. You know what else I'm curious to see? If SSD prices are going to keep getting cheaper. I, you know... Because according to the reports, SSD prices have dropped over 50% since 2018. That's actually really impressive. So if you ever needed a reason to sell your spouse and why you should drop the dough in a one terabyte SSD, it's because it may, it's economical. It makes sense. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that demand for SSDs decreased a little bit since uh, the memory or since Intel so CPU shortages. Is this both uh, M2 NVMe storage and 2.5? It's all flash storage. Oh, really? All flash storage. Yeah. So basically, here's what happened. Um I'm going to try and pretend that I'm not seeing these Nicolas Cage images in front of me because they're making me very uncomfortable where I sit. But uh, SSDs dropped in price significantly due to the lo- the loss in demand from Intel's CPU shortage. Since people couldn't get CPUs, they weren't buying a lot of the other components until they could get the CPU, right? Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so flash storage sales suffered a little bit. So did uh, desktop memory and so did memory and so on and so forth. So it kind of worked out in our favor. It almost makes me want to thank Intel. At the same time, though, the fact that memory pricing has been dropping and that's been so tied to SSDs, I'm a little worried that, like, next time we have any kind of shortage, both markets are just going to be awful for a couple months. It's a bit of a dink. just saying. Yeah. But, no, this is fantastic. I mean, I bought a, um, what, a 500-gig SSD for, like, (laughs) 120 something like that. <laughs> Juke W. The new phase off starring Matt Damon and Mark Wahlberg. I will literally kill myself where I stand if I see the preview for that. Yeah, that would be right amazing. where I stand. I just look at my life, take care of the kids. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ask her to take up crocheting so she could crochet me a noose. And that would be really confusing. Has he even been in any? I don't know, Alien Icon, has he? Has who been in what? I think that's when I was talking about John Travolta being in any recent movies. No, John Travolta has definitely been in a couple, but... It's like Mel Gibson. I saw Mel Gibson in one movie. The last movie I saw him in was the movie about him having a mental breakdown. And the only way that he can like get through it is he has this puppet on his hand. Mr. Rogers' and, Neighborhood? No. What is it called? What the... Dude, it is crazy. I'm going to look it up now. Well, I um, think Mel Gibson's trying to do a comeback now. Mel he just did the, Gibson um... Puppet... Hand he just movie. did Daddy's Home too, the Will Ferrell Mark Wahlberg thing, yeah. The beaver. What? He puts a beaver puppet on his arm, and it's the only way he starts talking to people is through the beaver. Like he does the voice of the beaver, and he has like a mental breakdown. What so is he's... this cast? It's got Jodie Foster. It's got dude. It's... Anson Yit. Isn't that the guy from uh, Star Trek that passed away? Yeah, that guy. Anton Yelnitz or something like that. Yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Yep. And um. Jennifer Lawrence. I didn't even know Jennifer what Lawrence the... was. Yeah, dude. It's so. How bad was this movie? Um, it was actually pretty good, but it was fucked up, like super depressing. I think at one point he cuts his arm off. Yeah. Uh, at some point he's he has the beaver on his arm and he can't get rid of it because it's like what he used to get through his illness. So he cuts his arm off instead of taking the beaver off. But then he's like, he snaps out of his like men- like his mental breakdown and he's back to normal. Yeah, watch it. It's a great movie. Very wholesome. Perfect for huh. perfect fun for the whole family. I mean, please by all means. Don't why think not? about it. That's... Don't think about it. Just do it. Ugh. Well, so you were just talking about it a little bit with Intel's uh, CPU Ju- shortage. Well, Juke wants to know where Wesley Snipes is, and no, he's out of prison. Oh yeah, Wesley but Snipes is he's... definitely not in any AAA titles anymore. No, that's for sure. But anyways, yeah. So the, the CPU shortage, which could have played into, which absolutely did play into the loss in. Uh, profits for the flash storage industry but to our benefit um but anyway with with bringing intel up it looks like they're talking about presenting their 11th gen graphics architecture well see that's the weird thing they didn't announce anything 
But it's up on the GDC schedule. Hmm. Really interesting because you think they would bring it up at some place like a developers conference, and that's exactly what they're doing. Um, but they haven't said anything beforehand, and usually there's either leaks or like a representative from Intel talks about what they're going to bring to the table and just nothing. So that kind of leads me to believe that maybe it's going to be a little underwhelming. I hope it's not. Maybe they'll segue into their dedicated graphics card that's already been rumored that they're going to be releasing within a few years. Yeah, I said uh, 2020, I think, was when they planned on having it out. So knowing Intel 2022? Man, if there was ever a time to come out with another GPU and throw that into the ring, it's now. Especially with the wake of RTX. Oh, and yeah. And Radeon 7. No, no, 7 that miles would be an a hour. Good time, but they're still probably, what, two years away from even their first production run you'd think yeah uh, I mean, i'm sure they have plenty of samples and, and engineering samples that they've worked on internally oh I mean, yeah we had our intel rep tell us that it's it was kind of exciting but also sad because intel is the kind of company that if they feel like you have technology that could lead into some sort of emerging tech it's very difficult to get turned down so like if you have an idea for technology and you have a roadmap for it um and a design they'll fabricate it for you to test it out he said they have a room he calls like the the technological graveyard because it's just tons and tons of ideas they've had over the years that were never released. Huh. Um, I, that would probably did, be Candyland. Yeah, didn't, he didn't mention any of the stuff, obviously, because um, no, on NDAs, yeah. and they want anyone to know, but I, every company has something like that, I've noticed. We have stuff like that where we've tried things out, and we're just like, yeah, no, it was interesting that we tried it, but it's going to stay here forever. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it was just interesting to hear that Intel's uh, that kind of company as well that's willing to kind of take risks and demo it before they look at it on paper and say no. Yeah. Because sometimes things don't look great on paper, but then when they come to life, you're like, man, am I glad we did that. <laughs> oh, and Ruru brings up a good point. Wesley Snipes was in Expendables 3. Do you count that, though? Because so is oh, Bruce. Oh, come on. Those, so is Bruce Willis. Those movies are terrible fun. And Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yep. And... Every Sylvester Stallone from and Jason Statham now, and Gerard Lee. Butler and Jet Li. Uh, Randy Couture. <sighs> um, wasn't what's his name in it too? Who? Not Burt Reynolds. You know, super American action hero, Walker, Texas Ranger. Oh, Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris. What's Chuck Norris name? Burt Reynolds, Chuck Norris. Eh. <laughs> Burt Reynolds, Chuck. What? Maybe? Dockside bars. <laughs> <coughs> Uh, Intel won't have consumer GPU till 2022. Yeah, you're probably right. Uh, and you know, probably what, right, Rudu. I don't, right, don't, don't want to start anything, but you're uh, going to start something. I think their their GPU will come about two years after they announce that it'll be coming. Like if they say 2022, I think it's probably a pretty safe bet that it'll come out in 2024. You know what I mean? I was going to say 2026. So, <sighs> well, I mean, considering how, how long, what are they on? Like their eighth year of the tenth nanometer attempt. Yes. Yes. Yeah. This is true. Eighth year of attempt, maybe they do about that. Yeah, it was like 2009 or something. They started talking about it. Uh, I, I don't want to get my hopes up, so we're gonna move on to some AVA news. You. I feel like there needs to be a segment that comes in, maybe like a whirlwind to transition into AVA news. Maybe somebody by the name of Kyle can sit next to us and actually deliver the AVA news. Yeah, when he actually wants to start participating in the company. <clears throat> hint, hint. Wink, wink. We'll just take apart portions of the chair to make it collapse the next time he sits in it. Hopefully he's not watching. Um, We'll get there, Weasley, okay? Hold your horses. We're not going to talk about it, right? We're going to move on to some AVA news first. So, we had our Valentine's Day sale. Still going on, right? Uh, you can find your perfect match with our PCs. See, you, it's okay to be single on Valentine's Day because you don't have to be single on Valentine's Day. You can snuggle up with a warm PC and, oh, look, there's my ugly mug. <laughs> Have fun. Um, PCs are great, so why not save 10% on a date? See what I did there? It's a really good deal. It's similarly priced to our Black Friday and Cyber Monday deals, but not quite as you know as competitive. I mean, it's just Valentine's Day. We're just trying to have a fun way and an excuse we're to give you guys a better to price. We're just trying to share the love. Yeah, we're just trying to have an excuse to, to kind of treat it like a commune and, and give you a little bit of our love. Dude, that went cultish real quick. Good. A new news. AMD's uh, Radeon 7 is now available. Again, uh, we covered this in previous live streams. It's similar performance to an RTX 2080 without the price. It's 100 bucks cheaper. It does not have ray tracing. But if that's not important to you, who cares? 
You know what else doesn't have ray tracing? My boot. I was going to say any of the games that you actually want to play. <laughs> Wait, now there's two. Metro Exodus and Battlefield Five. Wow. I want to melt it in the springtime and drink it. No? Beer Fest? Never seen. Ah. <laughs> I, I saw it like once on Comedy Central. We gotta get you out of those wet clothes and into a dry martini. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, the Radeon bundle now also includes the Radeon 7. What's in the Radeon bundle, Joe? Well, let me tell you, viewer. Resident Evil 2, Devil May Cry 5, and The Division 2. So not just one or two games, but three. And they're um, some of the games. Yeah, some of the cards will only let you choose one. Um, but a few of the higher end cards, like the RX Vega, the RX 590, uh, the Radeon 7, give you all of them. Yeah, I think it's a uh, 580 and below. You get what one, one and or two. Anything above that, you get two. <laughs> You're correct. Yeah. Um, Jimmy Mills said, as far as the Expendables, uh, Chuck Norris wasn't a part of it. It was a part of Chuck Norris. Fair. It's like the day that the Nazis surrendered in World War II. Chuck Norris was born. You know that? Chuck Norris was once bit by a rattlesnake, and after six hours of agonizing pain, the rattlesnake finally died. <laughs> it's like, you know how people go to bed and they wear, like, superhero... I miss those jokes. They you were know, fun. Do you know how, like, people go to bed at night and they usually wear, like, superhero sleeping pants, like Spider-Man and Superman? You know, they're, they're, they exist out there? Okay, yeah. Superheroes wear Chuck Norris sleeping pants. Yeah, Batman wears footy pajamas. Yes. His mother also wears army boots. Wait. No. Batman doesn't have a mother. <laughs> Not since the incident. <laughs> Jeez. Um, Anthem? Anthem's going to have ray tracing? <sighs> no? We'll see. I don't have a whole lot of hopes for Anthem, considering the, the demo already pooed the proverbial bed. So, that's it for AVA news, guys. I hope it was as good for you as it was for me. Ooh. Saucy. Getting a little saucy on Valentine's Day. A little, little saucy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Just have a whole live stream. That's the only way we can talk. Like unlit cigars. Yeah. 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 This is the only way we can talk on live stream. Like, you'll see, uh, gaming uh -huh. news, Metro Exodus is the crisis of this generation. Uh, it is about damn time. I feel right? like Crisis 3 has been like the game. No, it wasn't Crisis years. 3. It was Crisis. And man, I'm, I, I never thought I would hear that as much as I did when I first started working for AVA Direct. Like, hey, so I got this gaming PC. Here's my quote number. Okay, pulling it up. Yeah, it's pretty Nice game PC. I just have one question. Okay, what's up? Can it play Crisis? Ugh. No, but your mother can. No. Wow. Okay. Well. well, it's okay. So, how is Metro Exodus the new Crisis? Well. <laughs> I'm glad you, you asked. Um, a completely new overall dungeon from 4A, which includes dynamic shadow rendering along with facial capture rendering, which is pretty cool. Because that was one of the things that I loved about when I played Heavy Rain, the facial expressions and the emotions. Without them speaking a single word, you could see what was going on. Um, like in their face, for the most part. And that appears to be the case for Metro Exodus, right? With all the graphics settings. Oh, you made a news transition? Oh. Oh. Now we just need Kyle to get it together. Come on, Kyle. Come on, Cal. Or Carl. Coral! Pop culture god, you're letting us down. Coral, the news, Coral! So anyways, Metro Exodus, the new crisis. Couple of performance metrics for you. With all the graphics settings set to extreme, minimum frame rates per second on an RTX 2080 Ti, 32 at 1080p. 1440p, however, with the same settings, only takes a minimal, minimal frame rate per second rating of 30. So 32 to 30, not a big deal. But the maximum, it is 60 frames per second, 1440p, versus 72 frames per second, 1080p. So, um... For me, I'm the kind of person, right, that when you have a game that 60% of the time runs great, but it dips to like 30 frames per second, I'll skip a couple of generations of graphics cards until I can get into one that will play that game all the way through at minimum 60. 
and play it. Do I have yeah. I have over four hundred and some games on Steam. I have no shortage of games that I can play in the meantime. Okay, try, don't try and turn your addiction into something about graphics cards. <laughs> okay. Well. Oh, Fraulein Diamond. Screw that Kyle guy. Couldn't agree more. Fraulein Diamond. That sounds so familiar. It does. It's kind of like if you were playing Guess Who and you said the name Fraulein Diamond. The other person across the table might say, Does he look like a bitch? <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> the news kills people, Coral. <laughs> yeah, no, it is, it is exciting to see, like, because I don't know, I feel like graphics cards have kind of outpaced games a little bit recently. Mm. You know what I mean? Where, like, I have a, a Pascal Titan in my system at home, and, like, I haven't really Pascal. felt that I needed to upgrade it yet because I haven't really hit any points. This might be kind of the first of the games that makes me kind of think, eh, I may want to start doing an upgrade in the next couple years. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, it's exciting to see something that's coming out that is actually the most recent hardware right now can't run it at 140 frames a second or something like that. You know what I mean? I don't even really expect to play it at 140. Honestly, um, once I break about 75 that I notice on my G-Sync monitor, like, the gameplay is about as, as smooth as it can be. Well, I'm saying um, having a game have a setting that is a goal that we can't attain just yet, but the game is out. Yes. I like that that's a factor again. Yes. Yes, this is true. And I would agree with you. So... I don't know. If I get impatient enough, I might play the game. I mean, I really enjoy the other two. I probably won't play it at launch, but I'll, I'll probably end up playing it at some point. We should play together if there's co-op. I don't know. You think there there's co-op? I don't. There, I don't think there were in the other two. I'm totally ignorant when it comes to game releases because I like to be surprised pleasantly. So I don't like look into a whole bunch of games that are on the brink of coming out to figure out everything about it. I'm weird. I don't even watch previews half the time. I think that's that might just be a, a factor of today's day and age. Like, I don't get excited about games because too many times that I've gotten excited about a game before it released, it mm -hmm. released, and it sucked, and I didn't want anything to do with it. So at this point, I kind of think people hold back a little bit more. You're not as excited about stuff until it's actually out for like a month and has been played and it is good, Yeah. and then you get excited. And I think that's just because of how development's been going. On the conversation of Metro, Six Kitty said that uh, apparently the English voice acting in Metro is terrible. I didn't know it was even English voice acting. I thought it was like they're all Russian. Well, it's in English, but it's a Russian accent. But the that's what I'm saying. Ortyom, Ortyom. Like it has, yeah, yeah. you know, hmm. It's got the weight to it. So you're like, you're Russian, and I believe you. <laughs> we also may be a little biased on that. Well, maybe I guess. At the same time, though, I remember saying things in Russian when I was playing. Um, Black Ops with you and Zach and that Russian you were playing with. He's like, hey, yo, bro, are you Russian? I'm like, no. He's like, yeah, because uh, your Russian's crap. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least I have an excuse now. Yeah, don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have Harry Schmidt 69 joining us. How's it going, Harry Schmidt 69. How do I call into the show? Oh, we don't have an option for that yet, but we're thinking about starting a Discord. Yeah, would you guys be interested in a Discord? Yeah, that sound, like sound off. Actually in, care about? Sound off in the comments. Send us messages. If we get enough people, we'll get it set up so we can uh, have some two ways, have some two way conversations. You want a talkie talkie? Just let me know. Um, so something else I wanted to kind of bring up real quick. Have you seen anything that Lego's doing with AR? Have you seen anything about this? Lego this, and AR. Yeah, this is just uh, this is just coming to my attention. <sighs> Lego has been working on essentially an AR app that allows they had one that came out like i think last year that you would put up your phone and it would like animate little characters on your builds that was kind of neat but what they're doing now is they're releasing um it's called hidden side there it's a couple sets it's eight sets you don't need to buy the set to do it you can you can just get the app and, and play with it but there are eight sets that come out ranging anywhere from 20 to 130 bucks but essentially it's you build this lego um, you know, scenario, room, building, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And then you use your phone and it's almost like uh, similar to kind of Pokemon Go-ish. Pokemon you, Go? You look through Yo. your Lego thing and find like ghosts and you have, there's like a progression to it. So it, I, I just found so it's it like kind ghost of interesting. Hunters. Yeah, I just found it kind of interesting. That it, it's a Lego okay. working with AR. So they're developing um, hmm. an app and they're putting that out. It's supposed to come out, I think, later this year. Okay. I just thought that was kind of interesting that it's it's Lego. Like, it's not just plastic little blocks. They're doing a little bit more with it. Yeah, especially if you can interact with it. That's definitely something that's different. Yeah, and A lot of people out. don't do that. I mean, 
What what was the the thing that Nintendo was doing with the cardboard and the boxes? Oh, cardboard. Yeah, like you built things out of cardboard for the Switch. I don't know. What is it? I... It's gonna bother the hell out of me. <laughs> oh, Nintendo Labo. That's right. L A B O. No, you ever heard of that? I have no. I have no. I I didn't look too much into it, but once I realized it was just building cardboard for Nintendo, I, I lost. All interests. Didn't Google realize that that was a bad idea when they put out those glasses that were just literally um, an excuse for you to see very uncomfortable things all times of the day? Yeah. yeah. DIY fun for everyone. Nintendo Labo. No. Build your own Toy Con creations. Why? What the? Why? Nintendo just missed the mark on that one, dude. Yeah, see, even uh, Recon Spartan 117 says Nintendo Labo is a waste of money. Yeah, I don't. You're not wrong. It's, it's awful. Like we, it, it looks almost like this was before they came out with like the nice Wii editions, you know, like the steering wheel and the tennis yeah. thing. It's like they came out with the crappy cardboard version of it. Crappy, crappy. Super crappy nice. for you. Um, I was kind of hoping before Nintendo put all their stock into just weird stuff that perhaps maybe they would consider coming up with, I don't know, or releasing an updated Switch dock that had like 4k graphics capabilities because that was the rumor did i ever tell you about that no probably about two months after the switch released somebody posted on reddit um like patent documents from who is it who makes foxconn yeah. from the foxconn factory that makes the switch okay about testing they did on gtx 960 like graphics in performance and it detailed that it was essentially the whole thought process of it was that it would be a, a third-party dock that you would purchase. Okay. And the moment you plug the Switch into it, you're able to play 4K content because there's an auxiliary graphics capability within that third-party Switch dock. The downside with that, though, is that if you, let's say you want to play games that require that horsepower, you can't play a mobile. Well, the other thing is what, what does the Switch have enough connection bandwidth oh like, dude it's got a usb-c port on the is bottom. it usb-c oh yeah oh okay dude it's crazy like they literally can okay, legitimately could, they yeah. can legitimately come out with something like that and make it feasible but again the downside would be like it really kind of forces you to use that at home because if you ever want it like turns it into more of a console rather than that weird kind of like console ds hybrid that they're doing right now dude and i'm telling you right now that that console ds hybrid they got going for them is the only reason why i keep going back to the switch every time a game comes out for it that i'm interested in because well, the mean, 3ds would hold me for like a day or so yeah. when a game came out and i get bored i move back onto pc but like the switch any like bayonetta too like i never finished bayonetta 2 for the wii so i got it for the switch and i played that game nonstop till i beat it and it was fun either on the switch Mobile or on the TV, I, I enjoyed it either way. It was awesome. Oh, yeah. no, it... I completely lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but... No, uh, the, the Switch, it really it really felt like Nintendo realized that, you know, the Wii U, the Wii was kind of lightning in a bottle. Wii U wasn't that great. And they were like, we're doing really well with the DS, and we're getting our butts kicked by Xbox and PS4. I, the, I think the Switch was a really good call. It outsold both consoles last year. Oh, I believe it. Hands down, dude. Oh, I believe it. So if they can keep it up, if they can keep that kind of synergy between mobile and home use, and they keep releasing consoles um, with that capability, they'll be unstoppable because clearly it is something people enjoy. Oh, absolutely. You know, if they can get the fact that they were able to squeeze like current gen graphics into something so tiny, it's crazy. I would say, I think they elaborated that the Switch performance and graphics capabilities was somewhere in between like the PS4 and the PS3. I don't think they were quite that's, as good. That's still pretty decent, It's still especially for a little thing like that. Right, and it's decent considering a lot of the games they play are all cartoony. Like, you don't need well, great performance. Well, I mean, Nintendo has developed and... a new IP in what? <sighs> we'll call it a while. I was kind of hoping they would start going back to the way games were with the 64. Like, they took all the games that were side-scrollers, like Donkey Kong, yeah. and they made them into to fully 3D open-world enriched environments and it was awesome yeah i don't i don't know if i necessarily want nintendo to develop more games though why i don't want valve to develop any more games at all valve in 2019 is a garbage game developer i i will make that statement as the, a when was the last the last game they made was portal 2 exactly and back then they were a fantastic game developer but now i they just 
in the same way that they're not, I don't think they're at that, that point in a company anymore where Valve can make can develop a new game and have it be any good. Maybe that's why they're not releasing I don't Half-Life think Nintendo 3 can ever. Do the same. I think Nintendo's in a similar spot where they kind of have their, their stable of mm, IPs. See, that's where I think if you had more experience with the Switch, if you had one, you would completely disagree because I've played games for the Wii, I've played for the Wii U, I've played it for the 3DS, and yeah. the Switch was the first time I went back to some of my childhood ro- roots and played games all the way through. So I played... Um, Zelda all the way through. I played now Mario Odyssey all the way through. No, I'm saying so, I none mean, of those are new IPs. Like, they're not. They're not new IPs coming out with. You're right. Zelda. They, and Mario. they keep coming out with new iterations of their current IPs, but the Switch is the first time in a while, as far as the titles are concerned, on the Switch, they're the first titles in a while that were actually fun to play. Okay. And didn't feel like they were carving copies of the last. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. Kind of like since Mario Galaxy was a good example when it came out for the Wii, it was such a fresh concept. And we're like, sweet, a new 3D Mario game that doesn't feel like crap to play. Um, I never played the second one, but Galaxy is kind of like that. But it's the first time you could ever take your hat off and throw it at things. And you could also use that to your advantage and control certain characters in the game and inherit their abilities. They just did a really good job of keeping it fun, man. Huh. Especially with Zelda. Like, I even told Casey, like, a week ago, I'm like, I miss playing Zelda. I almost want to play through it again. But then that means I have to dedicate another 140 hours of my life into it. Brimstone's sleeping again. Not anymore. Wake up. He's tired. All, all the stuff he didn't do. He's tired. Just saying. You know, it's really hard doing absolutely nothing. <laughs> really hard. Um, um, so that's going to lead us into our next depressing topic. I don't even want to keep bringing it up, man. I don't want to. All right. Uh, Lizard lays off employees. Employees pissed. Uh, <laughs> the it's, end. It's... Uh, Blizzard has laid off about 800 employees. Whoa! Across the, the globe? Time as those layoffs were going through. Is this across the globe now, or is it any one particular location? Uh, I think it's just global. They oh laid off, like, I think 10%. Oh, of, my gosh. 8% of their uh, their staff. Wow. They laid off about the 800 people at about the same time as the CEO hopped on with a shareholder call and started talking about how it was a record year for Blizzard, um, which is... That's just in poor taste. Yeah, didn't didn't they just give the CEO a twenty four million dollar bonus? Something something crazy. Yeah, no. They, well, so that we'll talk about this a little bit later, um, dude. How could you sleep at night knowing that you were given a twenty four million dollar bonus and you just destroyed eight hundred people and like their livelihood? I, I dude, yeah. I don't care how like how much I care for money or how important it is. If I was offered a $24 million bonus and I had to take less to save 800 jobs, I would do that. Because then that's just going to improve your job security, kind of, right? Don't you think? Well, that's what they're talking about with this. So a lot of the cuts were $15 million in... sign-on bonus. Sorry, I was off. Yeah, a lot of the cuts were in the um, support departments and also in the esports departments. So what's interesting about that is last year Blizzard lost their CEO. Oh, uh, Blizzard is owned by Activision. Blizzard is owned by Activision. That, that's what we're going to be bringing up in a wow. second here. Wow. Um, when they got rid of their CEO, the one of the kind of the things that they were focused on that the previous CEO was focused on was uh, getting esports developed a little bit further for Blizzard. Right. So with this, the support teams and the uh, the esports teams were two of the ones that got cut because with the new direction that the company's going, that's kind of how they're shifting. And so we were just shown on screen that Obsidian tweeted that uh, they were sorry to hear about. Uh, Blizzard and the layoffs of the employees and that they provided a link to apply for a job with Obsidian. There are quite a few developers that did that. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. No, it's actually... That's it, awesome. There, that is kind of the silver lining is a lot of the um, a lot of the Blizzard employees, even the ones that stayed, were helping people that were going to get laid off try and find jobs. That was kind of the last couple of days of their work, it seems. Yeah. But one thing that is kind of interesting is a lot of the former employees have made the point that these changes the shifting of Blizzard and the layoffs are all directly as a result of Activision becoming more involved directly with the company as the owner. According to Weasley, Rockstar did too. Rockstar did. They reached out to provide job opportunities. For yeah, people. no, there are quite a few. That's awesome. Um, but dude, but I've read, I've read so much um, insider stories and like, I guess just the way that that industry is working for a gaming development company is awful awful even even for the people that are like well off and have great solid stable positions it is one of the most stressful 
companies you could ever work for. Well, and industries. The, the really. consensus seems to be that um, because people are passionate about games, because it's a lot of people's hobbies, that the um, the companies almost take advantage of you're doing what you love, and they they hit that angle pretty hard for a lot of people in this industry. Yeah, like if you if you go like on Glassdoor and you read some of the reviews from people working at some of the major developers, um, won't name names. Uh, some of the working conditions are terrible. Like you're forced to work long hours without any overtime because it's it's in your job responsibility to finish something from beginning to end, no matter what it takes. And that's why like people get pissed off. You have to understand the people that get pissed off at games that have a ridiculous amount of bugs. You're like, oh, why didn't you catch it? Like imagine your working conditions being ridiculously ridiculously negative, okay? And try to have the great attention to detail you need to bug check games at that point. You won't. I mean, just, you won't. It's just not going to happen. Think about how hard it is to bug check a game. You have to run in a circle for like six hours. Like it is a tedious process. Dude, it's not even just that. I've, I've known people that have done bug checking and it's like even when you like comb levels up and down to find bugs and you're pretty sure you found it more pop up later. Like you see the release of the game. You're like, I tested that level and that never happened when I bug tested. Oh, yeah. It's just too volatile. Well, it's because you have like what? Even if you have 100 QA testers, you'll have 100,000 people playing the game. Like, the, the sense of scale or the scale there is also. Yeah. It's just rough. I mean, so I'll officially go out and say that um, I wish anybody who lost their job at Blizzard the best of luck, obviously. Uh, I'm sure that they're going to make a recovery at some point in time as long as they stay diligent. It's just all about, as cliche as this is, it's about your attitude. Just keep a positive attitude, and I'm sure something will come your way. And, hey, uh, maybe this is a blessing in disguise. Maybe you'll find a job outside of the industry that actually is fulfilling and makes you happy. And you realize, like, man, if I wouldn't have lost my job, I'd be stuck in that job and I'd be miserable. So who knows? You know what I mean? That's kind of how it was for me before I started working at ABA Direct. I worked very basic retail jobs just because, I don't know, X, Y, Z reason. And I got the opportunity to work here and I'll never look back. So things happen for a reason. You just got to stay positive. I used to be a pool boy. I can see why. But the way that you grow a mustache, you were destined to be a pool boy at some point. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have to learn how to play the bass. <laughs> Slap at the bass. Why do you, why do you sound like Borat? Slap at the bass. You ever seen that movie? I Love You, Man? With Paul Rudd. Oh, uh, and the guy from How I Met Your Mother. Yes. Yes. And he's trying to he's trying to do Jamaican like, Slap at the bass, man. But he's like, Slap at the bass. <laughs> Slap at the bass. And his, uh, Beyonce's like, why do you sound like Borat? It's not Borat, it's Jamaican. It's Jamaican. Companies can't keep growing forever. Though. <laughs> there will be years that they have to trim the fat. That is true. It is very All true. Good I think things what was come interesting, though, with this blizzard is that they were cutting the esports department. Mm. Like, it's 20, th in 2019, I feel like that's kind of, if not one of the biggest um, segments in gaming, it's, or I'm sorry, if not the biggest, it's one of them. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's kind of odd that a company as big as Blizzard is pulling away from that in a way. Yeah. It's, it's just weird. A little bit. Teensy weensy weird. Um, but I think that's perfect timing because we are done with our stream for the day. Ho <laughs> ho! Yep. Sorry to end on such a bad note, but it was something we wanted to talk about because, well, there's no running from it. These things happen. Yep. You can join us again next week, guys, at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, same day as usual on Friday. So if you have any ideas for any themes for our live streams, Maybe you want to see us have a one-armed build contest similar to the uh, the bird box build. but maybe, maybe you guys want to jump on a Discord and actually start talking to each other instead yeah. of just us. Yeah, so, yeah, let us know. Maybe you want to send us some baked goods that aren't laced with drugs. I mean, whatever you want to do, that's fine. Until then, you guys have a great weekend. All right, see you guys.